Okay, a lot of times we just deal with torque as counterclockwise or clockwise, uh, but torque is actually a vector, and, and a lot of times we need to take into account the vector nature of the torque. So let's just review the previous definitions of torque. So if I have a beam right here and I apply some force over here, and this is the vector from the point of rotation, or it could be any point, it doesn't even have to be rotating, I have to pick a point. Uh, the vector from that point to where the force is applied, I could say the torque is equal to R F sine theta. That's what we did before. Or we said it like this, torque about O is R perpendicular F or R F perpendicular. These are all the same thing. So in this perpendicular thing, R perpendicular is if I draw a line like this, that's R perpendicular. If I find the force right here, that component of force, that's F perpendicular. And this is theta. Okay, so those are my definitions of torque. And if I said counterclockwise with positive and clockwise with negative. But in fact, this is a better definition of torque. This is the cross product definition of torque. Let me go over the definition of cross product and then I'll go over the right hand rule. Finally, I will show you how to do this in Python. Okay, so suppose I have two forces and I wrote this out beforehand. Suppose I have, not two, two vectors. So I have the R vector and it has three components, Rx, Ry, and Rz. And then I have the force vector as fx, fy, fz. So I broke them into x, y, and z components. If I do that, then the cross product is defined as the following relationship. And I know, it's long. That's why I wrote it down. So this says that the x component of the cross product of R cross F is equal to uh, uh, operation between the Y and Z components of R and F. It has nothing to do with the X component. The Y component is a product of the Z and X components, and then the Z component is a product of the X and Y components. So that's how you would calculate it. If, if you know the components, you can do this. You just put it in this crazy formula that I'm not gonna tell you where it comes from because it's complicated, okay? But this is the cross product. It's important because it gives us a vector answer. So this right here shows that torque is indeed a vector. Also, you're gonna find that this will come up when you're finding magnetic fields. The magnetic field also depends on the cross product. Okay, so we can find the direction of this vector uh, using the right-hand rule. So here is the right-hand rule. If I have two vectors, and let's use R and F, and the angle theta between them, then the uh, direction of the torque, torque equals R cross F, the direction can be found with the right-hand rule. This is my right hand. Yeah, I know I have my wedding ring on the wrong hand. That's fine. Okay, I'll tell you why later. Uh, so what I do is first find a vector. There's actually two vectors that are perpendicular to R and F. So what two vectors are perpendicular to both of these? Well, one of those vectors is, is like this. It's coming this way. This is perpendicular to R and F. There's no vector in the plane of this paper that's perpendicular to both of those. The other vector is a vector going into the paper. And so generally, if I want to draw these two vectors, I could draw them like this and this. This is a vector going into the paper because it looks like an arrow and you're looking at the feathers in the back. And this is a vector coming out because you see the tip. Okay, so those are the two vectors that are perpendicular to both of these. Now I use my right hand. Now you'll notice one thing. If I'm using my right hand, I put down my pencil, okay, or my pen, because I need to use my right hand. If you're left-handed, don't put down the pencil, see? Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is use my right hand. I'm gonna let my fingers curl through 
vector r and then f in the smallest possible angle. So if that's the case, then I would do it like this. And my thumb points in the direction of the torque. See, this would go through f and then r. This goes through r and then f. So the cross, the answer would be, the torque would be into the paper, which is the negative z direction too. Let me remind you, if you have x and y, we use a right-handed coordinate system such that x cross y gives us the z direction. So the z would be out of this. It's not just, it's just a convention, right, but we need to stick to it. And so this says that the torque, if I have this and that, the torque would be into the paper in the negative z direction. And that's actually where we get clockwise as negative torque, because it has a negative z component. And counterclockwise is positive because it has a positive z component. Okay, so I made this little thing right here too, uh, just so you can kind of see how this all works. So if this is R and this is F, then that would be the torque. So it's a three-dimensional problem. And you can see here that as I cross through R and then F, that would be the direction of the force. And these just happen to be at right angles, but they don't have to be. So in this case, I'd put R like that and F would be like that and the, the component would be in, the torque would be into the paper. But torque is a vector and it's, you cannot do it in two dimensions because the only way to have torque perpendicular to both of these is to be in another dimension, another, another direction. Now let me, so the first rule of the right hand rule is to put down your pencil, okay? Uh, the second rule of the right hand rule is to not hurt yourself. So you gotta be really careful. If I go, oh, R cross F, uh, and you can get your arms into really weird situations. Just be careful about that. You know, you don't want to twist your wrist so that it hurts. It's really just a joke, but that's the right hand rule. Okay, so torque is indeed a vector. Uh, I'm going to now show you how to calculate cross products in Python. Uh, because there is one other thing right down here. The magnitude of the torque is equal to the magnitude of R times the magnitude of F times the sine of the angle between them. And so we can do it both ways and check. And that's what I'm gonna show you in Python. Okay, so I am here at trinket.io. And I just wanna show you from the very beginning how to get there, I don't always show this. So once you, you are here and you create an account, you can log in with your Gmail account. Uh, I just go to here to new Trinket. Now, trinket.io has a bunch of stuff. Uh, it has Python. Uh, these other these ones with the keys you you can't save unless you have a paid account. Uh, but what you want to look at down here is GlowScript. It doesn't look like it's Python, but it is. So GlowScript has all of the vector operations built in. It's it's Visual Python. It's Python with more stuff in it for physics. Now when you get here, you're going to see this. It's going to say you could you could make a, a program by dragging these blocks around. Uh, if you want to do that, that's fine. I'm not a big fan. I just go to normal Python. Okay, so the, fir the first thing we're gonna do is just make two vectors. So I'm gonna make a vector r, uh, and I'm gonna just pick some values, one, two, three, and we'll change those in a little bit. And then f is another vector. Uh, let's say it's negative uh, 2.1, 2.1. It is, these are kind of big. Let's say it's a, let's say it's point, point, Point. Um, and then the the y component is going to be equal to uh, let's say 1.8 and the z component is going to be equal to 0 0.9 and these have units but I didn't put them in there uh, because that's not how Python works Newtons now I want to calculate the cross product uh, so let me just show you right here print uh, r dot x. This will print the x component of the vector r. And it didn't. Ah, I think I got that wrong. Point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3. There. So it printed 
point 0.1, that is the x component. Um, now, I'm going to take my little formula here that I, I wrote out for the, x, for the cross product, and I'm going to say this, tau equals, uh, and I'm just typing it out, vector. Now, the x component is going to be ry times fz minus rz times f y. I'm going to make a mistake here. I know it. And then I have rz times fx minus rx times fz. And then I have rx times fy minus ry times fx. And let's print out the, that vector. Okay, that's good enough. It worked. Okay, so I, I manually typed in each component, but wait, watch this. I can also just do this. Tau2, which I keep called tau, is cross R F. So the cross product is built into Python. And you see I get the exact same thing. So that's really good and useful. Okay, uh, now let's check. Let's check that the magnitude is still equal. Uh, so the, the, the first thing is how do you find the angle between these two vectors? Well, um, there is one, there's two ways to do it. First, I could say, um, uh, I mean, I could do it this way. So I could say the, uh, the magnitude of, I could use the dot product. I could say, I'm just writing this out, r dot f equals r times f times cosine of the angle between them. So that means that theta would be equal to uh, the dot product of r dot f, the arc cosine of that. So a cosine of the dot product of r f. I think that's right. So print theta. Let's see if that works. And this will be in radians. Okay, so I think that's okay. So now I can calculate the magnitude of tau. And that's just going to be equal to um, magnitude of tau 2. I'm using tau 2. And then I can print, uh, let's calculate R F sine theta. Okay, so that's going to be the magnitude of R times the magnitude of F times sine of theta, which I already calculated. Let's see if that works. So these two things should be the same thing. I mean, it's close. Why is it not exact? I mean, that's I'm pretty happy. That's I think that I think it's working. I think it's working. Okay, but the point here is that uh, ta a vec the torque is a vector, and you can calculate cross products in Python. So you can use Python as your calculator. There are some calculators that do that do cross products. Okay, you don't want to do it by hand um, if you don't have to, because there's a lot of calculations and you can easily make a mistake. So if you can use something like Python to do that. Do that. Let's see. Let's, let's save this and I'll put this in the link below. I always forget. Uh, Tor cross product, let's call it. There you go. Save it. Okay. So that's enough for torque. Uh, I'm going to stop there. I'll let you know the next chapter that we're going to be doing is going to be looking at the connection, but looking at one, angular momentum, and two, the angular momentum principle. So it's a pretty big deal, uh, and I'll see you guys later.